Hello and welcome to the WP 11.3 demonstrator. We have researched and developed a service-oriented architecture for the Internet of Things with autonomous components and to that end developed a number of these components. Last year, we presented the proof of concept for this SOA by showing a number of different components. Emphasis was given to the ability to cater for multi-critical applications and to be developed on embedded systems. The components were able to communicate with each other in order to provide a seamless integration of heterogeneous sensor networks. Although the components communicated in an automatic fashion, none of the components were smart or autonomous. We presented two heterogeneous sensor networks that communicated with two aggregator units. The aggregator units in turn provided services that translated to actions to the WSN. Moreover, we developed a registry unit that acted like a service DNS. Taking as a guideline last year's comments, we worked on this year's demonstrator as follows. We shifted our focus to primarily work on the aggregator units. We had to make the aggregator units autonomous and smart. We also had to test the limits of the aggregator units to find the breaking point of our system and find a way to handle this. The idea behind the aggregator unit was that it would be a modular piece of middleware. Changes or upgrades to one module should not mean that other modules cease to operate. This year, we developed new modules and extended and upgraded pre-existing ones. The new modules we added are the Search Memory Unit, the Monitoring Unit and the Request Execution Threads. The Service Provision Unit was renamed from Connectivity Unit to avoid confusion with the Sensor Communications Unit. The Search Memory Unit is a cross-module memory that any module can read or store information on. Each request is to be executed in a thread. This threads are queued according to their criticality. We have named the extension of the threads that caters for criticality levels as well as request execution threads. To help the decision making unit with its task, we've implemented a monitoring unit that monitors specified variables. The monitoring unit monitors in a periodic fashion with its frequency being preset. We have named the period of the monitoring unit as a monitoring quantum. The decision-making unit, which was our main focus for this year, has been reimagined. In order to cater for the autonomicity of the aggregator unit, we had to implement a set of self-ex properties. The decision-making unit is responsible for making decisions based on these self-ex properties and their policies. Although the decision-making unit makes the aggregator unit autonomous, the unit can act without the decision-making unit, but it be a deterministic unit with no smartness or autonomicity. The autonomicity of the aggregator is based on the implementation of self-ex properties. These properties are in turn implemented by a number of policies defined. First policy of the self-configuration policies is the ability to manage criticality levels. We have divided criticality levels in 5 plus 1 levels. Criticality levels of 1 to 5, with 1 being the lowest and 5 the highest, are to be used by any user of the system, while criticality level 6 can only be used by aggregator units in order to propagate important messages that should be prioritized. For each of the criticality levels, our aggregator unit creates a FIFO queue, where highest criticality queues are served with highest priority. We have named this algorithm CAFIFO, as in criticality aware FIFO. The second policy is a resource management. By using stress test, we have come to the conclusion that more or less each request execution thread or RET creates the same amount of load on the CPU and that each core of the Raspberry Pi can handle concurrently up to 15 threads. Moreover, we have made the assumption that an idle core consumes unnecessary power and should be turned off if it is not properly utilized. For these reasons, we have decided that a core is underutilized whenever it has less than two threads active. If a core is underutilized, it will no longer be able to receive RETs for execution and will be turned off when it finishes executing the last RET. In addition, if a core has more than 12 concurrent RETs running on it, it is regarded as overloaded and should not receive any more RETs. If there are available cores that are not overloaded, then one of these cores will have to handle the incoming RETs. If there are available cores that are shut down, then they are turned on again. Among the available cores, the next RET is to be assigned to the core with the least load at the moment the RET is to be executed. As such, the unit can load balance the RETs among its cores. If every core available is overloaded, Loaded, then the whole unit is considered overloaded. On a final note, if the unit is multicore, it reserves a core for its main functionality. The third and final policy is the sensor migration policy. When the unit is overloaded as a whole, then the unit will start calling nearby aggregator units to ask if they can take control of one of its sensors, so that the overloaded unit is alleviated. In order to choose which sensor should be migrated, we have implemented the metric. For this demonstrator, we will show this policy at the point of selecting candidate. We have two self-healing policies. The first one is the ability to filter out outlier data. The second policy is the ability for the 
that creator you need to have a constantly up-to-date list of the sensors under its influence. Since sensors can enter or exit the influence area of the aggregator unit, it is important to have a constantly updated list of the sensors. The last set of policies are the self-adaptation policies. In this category, we have one policy, the data acquisition policy. When the aggregator unit receives a sensor's reading request, it can decide on whether it will actually communicate with the sensor based on the criticality level of the request. For requests with criticality level 3 and 4, data is always read from the sensor by polling the sensor for a reading. In this case, we have a pool protocol of communication. For requests of criticality 1 and 2, cast data is responded back to the user, provided that the data is fresh enough. We regard fresh data as data that has been retrieved in the last 30 seconds. In this case, we have a cast method of communication. If data is stale, then the sensor is pulled for new data in a pool manner. Finally, if a request of criticality level 5 is received, then the sensor is switched to push protocol. In that case, the sensor constantly senses and sends data to the aggregator unit. Whenever a sensor is in push protocol, cast data will be responded for every request, as data is constantly fresh as it is constantly updated. The sensor remains in push protocol for 5 seconds, if no new request with criticality 5 for the specific sensor is received, or renewed for 5 more seconds if a new request with criticality 5 for the specific sensor is received. Time for our demonstration! For the development of this demonstrator, we used heterogeneous embedded systems and heterogeneous sensor networks. Adding to last year's hardware that was limited to Raspberry Pis, we now use proprietary mini PCs to act as aggregator units. Moreover, we now have more sensors to work with, including Bluetooth tracking sensors and CO2 sensors. On the screen, you can see two windows. The left window is the aggregator unit's status screen. The horizontal bars show the load of each core, and next to that you can see whether the core is reserved, is running, and the load level of the core. Underneath, you can see the unit's overall status and the total number of sensors managed by this unit. Finally, on the bottom of the window you can see important messages that show the decisions made from the decision-making unit that would otherwise be transparent. On the right window, you will see a service running that aims at providing a service to a user. In this example, we have a temperature service that aims at regulating the temperature of a room by using a ventilation system to cool it down. If temperature drops 2 degrees below the wanted temperature, the ventilation is turned off. This leniency to the temperature was added to add to the system's stability. On this example, we show a fire watchdog. The service measures the temperature, the CO2 levels and the ambient light of a room to decide if the room is on fire. Mind that for this demonstration, the levels of temperature and CO2 that are used to indicate fire are low enough to achieve a demonstration. However, if these levels are calibrated correctly, then the service indeed functions as a fire watchdog. The final service we will be showcasing is the person's whereabouts. The service searches for a person based on a Bluetooth tag the person bears or the person's cell phone Bluetooth. In its primitive form, it will search for a Bluetooth signal from a specific source and report if the person is in the aggregator's influence. Finally, we will show now what happens if we spawn multiple of these services to add great loads to the unit.